Okay, let's talk about Article 310. Now, not a lot happened in Article 310, but something big almost happened in Article 310. And usually I don't talk about things that almost happened because that's kind of like being almost pregnant. Well, you either are or you aren't, right? So in the code, we either made a change or we did not make a change. But the change that almost happened would be industry changing. And I think there's a decent chance that it does happen in the 2026 or maybe the 2029. You know, it's important to remember that, that when we have a big, major, industry-changing type of change, it usually doesn't happen in three years. It takes more than one code cycle to make that change. So we made proposals for the 2023 to change the minimum size conductors permitted for branch circuit wiring in the NEC in 310.3a. Those changes did not happen, okay? So we wanted to add 16-gauge copper and 14-gauge copper-clad aluminum to section 310.3a, and that's where the change would have to happen. The changes did not happen, all right? So I wanted to clear the air really quick and talk about that because there is a lot of confusion in the industry about this. We have 10-amp branch circuits, which we already talked about. Part of the reason we have 10 amp branch circuits now was to marry that with 16 gauge copper or 14 gauge copper clad aluminum in section 310.3a and also table 310.16. Those changes did not pass. So let's take a look at what did happen here in article 310. Not a lot, but worth talking about. Let's take a peek. All right, so 310, conductors for general wiring. 310.3, conductors specific requirements for copper clad aluminum were added. Now listen, if you're interested in the subject of copper clad aluminum, and in my opinion, you should be. It, it, it doesn't matter. A lot of people, as soon as they hear aluminum, they're like, oh, I'm not using it, it's aluminum. Well, it's not aluminum. It's copper clad aluminum. <laughs> and number two, by the way, aluminum is fine. Aluminum is perfectly fine to use. And this isn't aluminum anyway. It's copper clad aluminum. It's a bimetal. It's a whole different product. But here's the thing, even if you decide, I'm never going to use aluminum, and I'm never going to use copper clad aluminum, even if you make that decision, if you don't buy it and you don't install it, you might still find yourself up against it in the field. What do you do if you have aluminum wires that you didn't install, but you're in a building or a house that has aluminum wires? You, you have to know what the rules are. Just like with copper clad aluminum, you can say, well, I'm never touching copper clad aluminum. I hate that stuff. It doesn't matter if you love it or hate it. There's going to be plenty of people out there that install it because there's nothing wrong with installing it. So you need to know what the requirements are. 310.3, specific requirements for copper clad aluminum were added. All right, so conductors can be copper, aluminum, or copper clad aluminum. Those have been our three options ever since 1971. Over here on the left, we have aluminum. Obviously, this would be um, compressed strand aluminum excuse me, compact strand aluminum. <laughs> here in the center is compressed stranded copper. And then over here on the right, of course, is solid and it's copper clad aluminum. And you can see how it's got a copper outside and a aluminum inside, but you can't just, you know, strip it off with your fingernail or something. You, you'd have to, if you wanted to, to actually access the, the aluminum portion, if you look close enough, you can see that that, that was done with a knife to get into the aluminum to expose it. So aluminum and copper clad aluminum must comply with the following. Item one says for solid aluminum conductors, eight gauge, 10 gauge, or 12 gauge, the aluminum alloy must be double A 8000 series. All right, so we're gonna regulate the type of alloy that we use for aluminum conductors. We're not using pure aluminum. For that matter, we're not using pure copper. We're not using pure anything. <laughs> I mean, there, there's almost no such thing as a pure element that is in use, okay? Everything is gonna be some sort of mixture of different elements. We're gonna have alloys. So what kind of alloy do we use for aluminum? Double A 8000. That's the case for solid aluminum, and that's the case for stranded aluminum, size eight gauge through 1000 KC mil. Those also must be AA8000 series for SE cable or individual type RHH, RHW, XHHW, XHHN, XHWN, 
THW, THWN, THHN, or THHW. All right, so looking at this conductor, it says that it's a compact strand, which we saw earlier. It is AA8030, so this is an 8000 series alloy, so we know that complies. AL, of course, means that it's aluminum. XLPE is a marking that we don't really use in the NEC. We use this marking over here on the right, which is XHHW-2. XHHW-2 is cross-linked polyethylene. What do you suppose XLPE is? Well, it's cross X cross link polyethylene. So either way, those two things kind of mean the same thing. So this is a cross link polyethylene conductor, XHHW-2. It's aluminum alloy 8000 series. We have to use that alloy or better for aluminum conductors. And we also have to use it for copper clad aluminum. For copper clad aluminum, the conductor must be at least 10% copper and the aluminum core must be AA8000 series aluminum alloy. All right, so in the photograph, we have this copper rod, this copper clad aluminum rod that I have here in my hand. And when we make copper clad aluminum, it is rod form like this. And this is a, I think it's a 3 8 copper clad aluminum rod, same way we, that we do copper. We take solid copper or solid aluminum 3 8 rod, and then we stretch it out into smaller conductors. So with copper clad aluminum, it has to be at least 10% copper, and the aluminum alloy, again, has to be AA8000 series, and this is. So it's 10% copper, and then up to 90% aluminum in cross-section. When they make copper-clad aluminum, they take the aluminum, because remember, the issue with aluminum, the concerns with aluminum, is the terminations. Because as soon as you expose aluminum to the oxygen molecule, you create a compound called aluminum oxide, and aluminum oxide is an insulator. So that's where the issues with aluminum come in, is when you terminate it, you have an aluminum oxide layer over it. Now, just the actual act of terminating it is enough to break that aluminum oxide layer apart and get down into the actual good aluminum alloy. But it's still better if we don't have the aluminum oxide at all. So when we manufacture uh, copper clad aluminum, they take the solid aluminum and they put it into a atmospherically sealed chamber and they strip the outer portion of the aluminum off. If there was ever any oxi uh, aluminum oxide on it, they peel it off and then they shoot copper over it and they metallurgically bond it together to create a new bimetal. And the reason I'm saying that is that the aluminum in this rod, where it's touching the copper, that aluminum has never touched an oxygen molecule because during the process of manufacture, it was all stripped in a, in a vacuum chamber. So you don't get the termination issues with copper clad aluminum that you might get with aluminum. So that's just kind of the general idea behind copper clad aluminum. Again, I've got a video where I sat down with my friend Peter Gracer with copper with uh, copper weld, and there's a link to it below in this video. Click on it and you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about copper clad aluminum, and probably more than you ever wanted to know <laughs> about copper clad aluminum. I think we went like an hour and a half talking about copper clad aluminum. So lots of information there. As far as the code is concerned, we're talking about how copper clad aluminum is created. And number four, we're indicating that it has to be listed. All right, well, I think that's a good requirement. You know, there is no requirement that aluminum conductors be listed or that copper conductors be listed, but there is a requirement that copper clad aluminum conductors be listed because it's it's more involved, right? The, the process of manufacture is much more involved than just copper or just aluminum. So we wanna make sure that this stuff is meeting all the test requirements set forth in the product standards. Now, here in the picture, I'm showing some NM cable that's copper clad, as you can see, and we can also see that it's listed, and here's the UL listing number on it. Now, that listing isn't really to satisfy this section. Remember Article 334 for Romex, for NM cable, I should say, <laughs> NM cable has to be listed. That's 334.6, and this cable is listed. This section is not really talking about NM cable or MC cable or anything like that. That's talking. This is actually talking about the individual conductor, right? The individual conductor itself has to be listed. So if I'm pulling XHHW or THWN copper clad aluminum through a conduit, those individual conductors now have to be a listed product. 
So that's what happened in 310.3. And equally as important, that's what did not happen in 310.3. So maybe in the 2026 or the 2029, we'll see 16 gauge copper or 14 gauge copper clad aluminum. But for right now, it's not in the code. All right, we'll see you on the next video.